Did it look all right, lighting and all that? Yep, or should I go get my go. ring light? No, nah, you're good. You're good. Oh, all wait right. a minute. Now we're on. What's up, guys? It's your man, Donovan Sharp, and welcome to the 403rd edition of TSR Live, your daily dose of red pill truth, wisdom, and awareness. It is, what is it? It is Tuesday, February 5th, 2019. Uh, we are brought to you in part by Good Vibes CBD Oil. Good Vibes will not only drastically reduce your anxiety symptoms, you will also get some of the best sleep you've ever had. Use promo code Donovan15 to get a 15% discount on CBD oil. Just go to DonovanSharp.com now and buy it through my affiliate link. We are also brought to you by Tactical Soap. Tactical Soaps are formulated with a bioidentical pheromone blend designed to enhance the alpha male attitudes that women love and men respect. You can buy Tactical Soap through my affiliate link on DonovanSharp.com and be sure to use the promo code Donovan to get an additional 10% off. All right, let's go, let's go ahead and get to it, guys. Um, my guest this evening is none other than Ryan Stone of 4R Consulting. You guys can find his website, ryanstone.com. That is R-I-A-N-S-T-O-N-E.com. You guys can find him on Twitter at, I think, is it Ryan underscore Stone? I don't think you're on Facebook, are you? Um, uh, yeah, I'm on everything. Underscore oh, Ryan okay. underscore Stone for just about everything. The only difference is YouTube, where I got rid of the underscores because there actually was space for it. Oh, Turns okay. out there was another Ryan Stone. I don't know if you heard about this guy, but he... Uh, Went on a big rampage to get the YouTube copy strike so we can get the revenue from it. No, so he's kind of really stolen all of my all of my brand. Oh my god! Wow. <laughs> well, and listen, maybe you can parlay that into some momentum on your end, right? So if he ever gets big, people Google him, they find you. Yeah, wonderful. Yeah, it is. What That's it what is. I want to be associated with. <laughs> <laughs> um. So uh, yeah, listen, guys, I'm back on the air. Um, I had a, uh, I had a big uh, dude. I was in the ER all night last night. Um, had a stomach virus. Everything is fine now. But uh, today we're going to talk about today. I'm, today, guys, uh, Ryan and I, we're going to discuss some of the necessary steps to make your woman the best woman she can be. How to turn your wife or girlfriend into uh, into the wife or girlfriend you've always wanted and needed. Now, I'll, I'll start off with this and I'll get your thoughts on this, Ryan. The manosphere is full of guys talking about the negatives when it comes to American women. Rightfully so. I do the same myself. We don't need anyone to tell us what to look for in a woman because we inherently know what we want to need as men. What we need to be told is what not to look for. And the best source for that, of course, is the, the, the manosphere. Anyway, what men also need to know and understand is how to bring out the best in a woman once you have identified her as a potential long-term partner. Uh, obviously, provided that you've groomed her properly, you've trained her, you've made her your main chick. When a man has taken all of the necessary steps to make her his own, it is as important, if not more important, to know how to cultivate the good qualities, mitigate the bad qualities, and bring out the best in her. Yes, Women have a lot to be desired. We get that. Yes, women cheat. They're only good for sex, et cetera, et cetera. They have you know, habits conducive to infidelity. They can't cook and all that stuff. But part of the reason that women have devolved into what they are today is because of us. We are part of the reason. We can Listen, guys, we can talk about how feminism has corrupted women and how it's bad for them, and that's all 100% true. But we as men, we need to take responsibility for the deplorable state of women here in 2019. That doesn't absolve them for their bad decisions, but pretending that we don't shoulder some of that blame, uh, some of the blame for the sexual market, that is being disingenuous and dishonest. It's not all woman's fault. And I'm not going to sit here and say, well, it's all. No, 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 no. We are part. We are partially to blame. Now, if you decide to take a woman as your possession, OK, if you decide to commit to her long term, she becomes your responsibility, guys. OK. A man will complain. A man will complain that his woman got fat. He'll complain that she's not having sex with him. He'll complain she can't cook. He'll complain about everything. But what he leaves out is that he's not taking the lead in the relationship. He's not demanding her best. He's not helping her to be the best woman she can be. Gentlemen, you can't complain if your you can't complain that your woman is getting fat if you don't keep in shape. You can't complain that your woman's not fucking you if you're not sexually pursuing her. You can't complain about your woman disrespecting you if you don't address and eliminate disrespectful behavior. That's like saying, well, my kid is such a bad kid when you've never disciplined the kid. It doesn't work that way. So what we're going to talk about, guys, is we're going to talk about how to cultivate good habits in your woman while eliminating the bad habits, at least mitigating them so that she can be the best woman that she can be. Doing this isn't that difficult, but it's not really easy either. But if you're not aware of what's necessary to keep your woman in line, you're really already behind the eight ball. So what are your what are your opening thoughts, Ryan, on the, the, the steps necessary to keep your woman in line and to make her the best woman she can be? Uh, to you, of course, you know, wives and girlfriends, husbands and boyfriends. Oh, wow. Um, 
So I find the way I approach this is fairly unique in the manosphere. I'm not sure why. I'm not sure how, and that's fine. I don't look at this as in something to find blame. Yeah, I always say this, and it's a little harsh not to counter everybody here, is I look at these things as mental models. Okay. The idea is, as a man, and we've been like this since caveman days, we've kind of looked at the world through stories. And so when you think of it like that, and you build a story that's positive for you, whether or not it's true, that it allows you to make these good decisions without having to list uh, 10 reasons that she'll cheat or 10 things that. Right. And I'll get to why in a minute here. But I'll use an example here from my life. So when I was when I joined the Navy, it was at the point where I believed in the meritocracy, the work hard, play hard. And that's right. a mental model. The idea is if you work hard, you do your job. If you're the best damn sailor, you're going to get the promotion. Right. That's not. Now, we all know that's basically not how it works. I got <laughs> women that were promoted ahead of me with the boss saying, yeah, well, we need more women in, in tech, basically. So it would actually get me very frustrated because we have a mental model, but it doesn't map to reality. And so when we talk about all these problems with guys, who's to blame in that, I think that's the wrong question to ask. Okay. Instead of finding out who's to blame and who's at fault, you just look about like, what mental model do I have here and why is it not fitting? And this is where I think the red pill has to be one of the greatest inventions of the manosphere since the 1980s when they had the BBS boards, if you guys can remember back during <laughs> GopherNet and that. Yes. And that's the beauty of it. And it's... So I'm totally going on a tangent here. So I guess no, we got it, time, man. right? If you notice, most of the people who hate on the red pill, they pick some general, small, nuanced statement and they go, well, I can find an exception. We all know the not all women are like that argument, the N-A-W-A-L-T. But that's the wrong question. And I told this to Ed Lattimore when you and all three of us were together. I'd like to be yes. thinking I got into Team Brown there for a little bit. It felt really good. <laughs> I started my dancing improved and my credit score went down, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> but uh, I told like if if I can tell a guy the moon is made out of cheese and he goes to the gym three days a week, then as far as the red pill is concerned, the moon's made of cheese. Right. So right. we're not really concerned about what's true. And in this case, so a lot of the questions you asked was how to get the best out of your woman. I find that's the wrong mental model to ask because it's it's putting her on a pedestal. So it's okay. like I do this and then she responds with what I want. And it's a, generally a covert contract because the woman's never there when you decide on these things. And the one truism I found is when you put a responsibility onto a woman, mm -hmm. she will. I can swear on your channel. Yes, of course. Yes. She will <laughs> fuck that up on purpose. Easy. Women absolutely hate rejection. They hate failure. They hate the idea of being seen as the cause of failure. That's a blame thing. And women cannot stand it. They would rather sabotage it than take the chance. And as much as I say this, guys still don't understand how, like, when you think about the most risk averse guy who is afraid of getting rejected and never approaches, he's a three. A right. woman's fear of rejection is an eight. And if you don't believe me, talk to any Chad that you've ever met who turned down a girl who wanted to fuck him. Oh my and God. And he will tell you without fail that she turns into a raging fucking beast. It is always, always an adverse reaction. Dude, I've told, I don't know if I've told this story and before. Violent half the time. Dude, it, listen, man, women do not handle rejection well on any level. Rejected for jobs, rejected for parts, especially rejected by men because women are used to getting their way with men all the time. Yeah. I remember I'm filling up my, uh, I'm filling up my car uh, in Vegas. It's probably 174 degrees outside. And I drove a really nice black Audi A5 and these, and these fucking <laughs> fat, this fuck, these two fat white girls, you know, roll up bumping Juicy J or whatever, whatever the fuck it was. And, but you know, they get out, the girl's got the big hoop earrings. I don't know. She's probably 200 pounds you could tell she was chunky so she came over and she started she's like oh that's a really nice car what's your name i'm like look sweetheart it's not that kind of party i'm not interested you can go and she's like well you don't have to be such a fucking asshole but i was like nope keep it moving so she goes over and she starts talking all this shit about you know about me to her girl like she's pointing at me i'm like oh my god women do not handle rejection well at all see i go the other way i've had a girl that was i was not interested in her and she was a babbling mess in front of me so I basically just made out with her for 10 minutes just to calm her the fuck down <laughs> and then skipped out of town. That leave him better than you found him. When she's uh, moody, listen, when she's moody, smack her booty. And I'll get back. And this is to circle back to your question there about how to get the best out of your woman. This is a lot of guys in the manosphere. They talk about leadership. And yes. I'm sure you've heard the speeches. Here's the problem is that I don't think they understand what that means. And in this case, you know, and this is the, this is the mental model to have. 
you know that women fear rejection and responsibility to the point that they will sabotage whatever they're in. So right. that's your mental model. So when you take leadership in these kind of things with your wife, you don't put responsibility on her. You essentially take it on. Now, that's not to say you do things for her that she should be doing herself. Right. But you just make sure that the blame squares fully on your shoulder on your shoulders. And it's she'll help you on this one. So it's not like it's a one way street. It's not oh, a no. hard climb. And no, I find I, that tends to get the better response because then you're taking that sh off of her shoulders. That's you leading the engagement. And that's anybody who's worked in a military or any organization where you have people underneath you as a subordinate, you, I think you've heard the saying, uh, your fault, my responsibility. Yeah, right. Yeah. It's one we used to use in the Navy all the time. And that's exactly how it was when you're in middle management. If your guys fuck up, it's still your fault. That's and right. You have to deal with it. That's right. And th listen, that's the way it should be. Listen, yeah. I mean, it's, I mean, well, even it should I mean, or not, doesn't matter. It is so right. It is. You right. want to succeed. Just deal with it. Listen, and listen, if, if, if you're out and about and you see a woman is getting out of pocket and you see a woman who's, who's with a man and she's out of pocket, we're not saying, damn, what the fuck is she out of pocket for? We're like, dude, like whose bitch is this? Like who bitch this is, right? Like who do you belong to? Yeah. That's the yeah. way, that's the way we see it. Your woman is a reflection of you. Oh, and you're going to love this. Cause I got so many nuances to, to, to like slightly disagree with you, but not really to get some nice insight as a segue here. Let's do it. When you said that guys know what they want, I find an amazing amount of guys don't have any fucking idea. It's the weirdest wow. thing. Like we think we really? know what we want. And I'll, this is a lesson I actually learned from the red pill women. If you can believe this of all. Oh, places. Okay. All right. <laughs> a lot of, yeah, I get the solipsism. I get, they want to do Pinterest, but this was one thing that this middle-aged former slut cock or carousel riding woman figured out really early on guys are notoriously good at learning to like what they can get yes so, okay yeah if sense. you were if you dated goth girls in high school a girl dressing like goth is hot to you and if any girl asks you how to pick up a man you'll say just put on black lipstick <laughs> if you dated nerd girls growing up then you're gonna tell every girl put on put chopsticks in your hair and wear some turtle shell glasses if you've wow. only dated black women you're gonna say hey i want you to scream and throw shit like, <laughs> I am so going to get demonetized, man. I swear to God, you're a well, bad listen, influence on me, Donovan. <laughs> listen, fortunately for you, listen, fortunately for everybody here, I always take these videos down immediately and put them on Patreon. So again, we can say shit, fart, all that, all that, all that good oh, stuff. Oh, that's awesome. But you make that's a good awesome. point. I've never really thought of it that way. Guys are so thirsty that they don't. And I think that if if the sexual, if, if sexual dynamics between men and women really were the way they were supposed to be masculine mm -hmm. men feminine women i think that men would be more ad they would be more adept at knowing what they want but yeah. because or at least knowing know, their limitations not, right exactly and at some point they could really sort of pick and choose which traits they want and which they don't well we did you know we did that as teenagers unfortunately the girls that had the traits that we want we're sluts and they don't want us. So at that point, any girl that pays attention to us, oh, okay, yeah, blondes are my type, brunettes are my type. No, wait, Latina girls are my type. That's how that works. So I'd never thought of it that way. Guys really don't know what they want in terms of women. Now they yeah. like what they can get. Now we like the visceral thing. Like if a girl's got hips, if a girl's thin, big tits. And I think, I want to say it was Jeff Miller, but I can't remember which one it was. They had, they were bringing out some studies about this, which was really interesting. They found that, uh, the way a guy categorizes girls on his, you know, HB one to 10 scale. Sure. It tended to correlate closely with where he was on the scale. So if a guy was an average of five, he would tend to gravitate around girls that were six or seven. If okay. a guy was an eight, nines and tens. If a guy is a three, he tends to like four and fives. And I'm sure you see examples of that where guys are talking about, uh, oh, that chick's too skinny, but he's a fat fuck sitting on a couch eating Cheetos, right? Right. <laughs> talking about a super attractive girl. Yeah, it's, it's just something... And I don't fully understand it, but I find it something we're hardwired for. So, and the reason I bring all this up in the sense of bringing out the best in a woman is you learn, and instead of blame, you learn what your mental models are so you can change those. So you realize, right. all right, so I'm, she's always been this kind of woman, so I'm attracted to it, but that's not what I want now for whatever reason. Like, let's say you like a girl that takes charge, but then she's a raging cunt to you all the time. And maybe right. you don't like that for some <laughs> god awful reason. You want a girl to be pleasant. You got to realize that you have basically trained her to be like that through your actions. Right. But if you don't think that, you know, what I'm attracted to is what I could get, then you don't make that connection. And so you don't change that mental model. And so you don't bring the best out in your woman because they're, they're water and you're yeah. the container. Oh, course, they will take course. the shape. I think Archwinger, greatest, one of my favorite guys in the married red pill. He was a very prolific author. He, uh, had a really, really shitty wife, which honed his game to an amazing extent. 
And he wrote a great thing. I think I've even transcribed it to mine because he's gone now. It's that women are as shitty as you let them be. That's right. And as a mental model, totally not true. Some chicks are bipolar. Some chicks are insane. Some chicks are just whores, whatever. But if you take that as your mental model, and you know, if I didn't say blame, nobody's fault, they're as shitty as you let them be. You and go. if you assume let that, them. yeah. And if you assume that, that puts you in the state where your decisions start to reflect that. So if she's acting like a cunt, like, oh, well, I've let her think she can run her mouth to me. And then you just detach from the conversation. It's like, all right, I'll stop. I'll regroup. And that ties into probably my favorite. It's not Ryan's rule. I haven't come up with a name for it yet, but I think <laughs> it's the greatest thing I've ever come up with the manosphere. It's that we only have three tools to enforce our boundaries in a relationship. Okay. And I talked about this in my American omelet video. You've got your affection, you've got your attention and you got your commitment. And you don't have a stick, but you can remove the carrot and the carrot and the stick analogy. Of course. So if you want your girl to be her best, when she's acting in a way that you don't like, for whatever reason, it doesn't have to be rational, it's your reasons. If you can pick a stupid reason if you want to, if you want to enforce it, it's your business. But depending on how severe a boundary that she steps across, so if it's something small like, hey, don't yell at me in front of my family, and she starts doing that, so maybe you just have to pull your affection. You just get a little bit cold and distant. Girls need affection like men need pussy. It's You pull that away, it's the equivalent of her saying, no, I don't want to fuck tonight, I have a headache. And that's another one. One of the other moderators met, married Red Pill. His article, Verbal Intercourse is Optional. And I love this story because he uh, he tells the, a nice Verbal parable so people can understand a mental model of uh, what's a, what would happen if you went to your wife, you tried to have sex, she shot you down, went to the, went to the living room, and you chased her around with a rock-hard erection fucking <laughs> harassing her to fuck you Helicopter. you'd be arrested yes. <laughs> you'd probably be arrested she'd at least fucking smack the shit out of you so why is that any different than when a girl's being a raging cunt to you and then you leave the room and she starts following you around you fucking go. saying to pay attention to me if you know it, it is again, no different yeah it comes back to the mental models and so you realize you start to frame it in this way where you realize people aren't the same girls men and women are different and you realize she's shitty because you let her be that way. And then you've got your tools to pull away from it. In this case, it's just, you know, attention. You leave the house, go to Starbucks, practice some day game, read your, uh, your book's coming out soon, isn't it? You said? Yep. Yes, it is. Yeah. Perfect. Bring Donovan's book. It's a heavy read. Go. So you're probably going to want to take it to Starbucks anyway. And then let's say something more serious. Let's say she goes out to lunch with a ex-boyfriend of hers. And for oh you, that's God. maybe a more serious boundary. Uh, yes, and she doesn't live with you yet. So just pull your commitment. All right. You demote her to a plate. There you this go. This ties into, and I always reference documents in this one because everything we say has been written down. This is the human sock puppets, bitch management guide. And it's a, fucking, <laughs> I love it. It's the magnum opus of the red pill. I swear to God, he basically lays it out and he just pull your, you pull your commitment. You demote her to a plate. And this is especially important for married guys because they love to think that, well, what can I do to save my relationship? And you can't. What you can do is you make yourself your mental point of origin. You only associate yourself that people are valuable with. Now, a girl's job is the relationship. She, will, If a relationship is going to foster or die, it's all on her. It's Brifold's law. And you can see that every time there's a marriage. If you have a marriage with a guy who doesn't want to be in it or a girl who doesn't want to be in it, which one do you think is going to last longer? I guarantee you it's the one that the guy doesn't want to be in it. Of course. Now, he may cheat. He may treat her like crap. He may even, in the worst case scenarios, he may even beat her. But if a girl loves a guy, she will stick by she's his She's not son. going anywhere. Yeah, she's not going anywhere. But you get a guy who's a schlub who's kissing ass and his wife doesn't want to be there, that shit's fucking over. <laughs> Roosh actually had something uh, posted in the Roosh V forum recently. Oh yeah, uh, a bunch of yeah, a bunch of pictures of guys. Like he said, I want you guys to post a bunch of pictures of guys who you know are going to get dumped and or cheated on. It was it was unbelievable. <laughs> it was it was funny as shit. It was great. I wish I could read it. Did I tell you he's actually no. blocked me from Twitter? No, man. I didn't. Listen, I'll uh, I'll sh <laughs> I'm, I'm on his email list from from way from a long time ago, back when I first started reading. Or okay, I'll I'll forge you the email, and that'll 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 get you into the into the forum. Oh, um, dude, I would love to read that. That'd yeah, be fun. It was, it's fucking awesome. Um, big shout out to Rob to watch or listen to the rest of this episode. Go to DonovanSharp.com. Thanks for watching.